This is lesson 54 on page 232. Okay, so this lesson doesn't merely introduce vectors, it teaches vectors. So this is a physics concept. So vectors have two things. Vectors have magnitude and direction. They have magnitude and direction. Magnitude is almost like length. Direction is angle. All right, so when we look at the direction of, of a vector, we always begin, and so this is true in all maths, all levels of math. We measure our angle beginning at the positive x-axis, the positive side of the x-axis. So our initial ray is the positive x-axis. Angles have an initial ray and a terminating ray. So what happens is you begin at this initial ray, the positive x-axis, and that other ray rotates around the coordinate system, okay? It can rotate counterclockwise, which is typically the way that we rotate it, or it can rotate clockwise. Got it? Counterclockwise, for now, we're gonna do counterclockwise. When we rotate it counterclockwise, we have a positive angle. Angles rotated <clears throat> counterclockwise is positive, all right? So, if I go in the first quadrant, it's between zero and 90 degrees. All the angles in the first quadrant are between zero and 90 degrees. If I'm rotating counterclockwise, that terminating ray. In the second quadrant, all of my angles are between 90 and 180 degrees. In the third quadrant, they're between 180 and 270. In the fourth quadrant, they're between 270 and 360 degrees. Okay? So, <clears throat> if I looked at a vector in the first quadrant, Okay, I'm not gonna draw the right triangle first. So a vector has magnitude. That's literally the length of that, how far the object travels, the length of it, and it has direction. That's the angle from this positive X axis. And there are two ways, well really there's a few more in your higher level mass and in physics. But there are two ways this textbook labels the, um, the vector. It labels it in rectangular coordinates. and polar coordinates. Rectangular coordinates are really the X, I want you to think X, Y, because this is really the rectangular coordinate system. That's what this is called. The Cartesian coordinate system is really called the rectangular coordinate system. So we're gonna think X and Y when we, when we um, think of, of what is the coordinate of that, where that vector ends, okay? This is the terminal point. The very end of the vector is called the terminal point. 
So it has an X and a Y. <clears throat> so I want you to think X, I want you to think R, as in right, or the opposite of right, right? This is positive R, this is negative R. Got it? This is positive R, negative R. <clears throat> and then the Y, we're going to use the U, the letter U. So on the Y axis, this would be positive U, this would be negative U. So when we write our rectangular coordinates, we're just going to ask ourselves, what is the X, Y coordinate of that terminating point? So you always will draw a right triangle and you're drawing it always a hundred percent of the time to the X axis, always. So I would draw a right triangle and if I said um, maybe the distance from here to here is three and the distance from here to here is two, let's make it four. Make it a Pythagorean triplet. Four. Then this vector in rectangular coordinates is 3R plus 4U. I went positive R3. I went positive U4. The polar coordinates is M at your direction. So rectangular coordinates have to do with your X and your Y value. Your polar coordinates have to do with the magnitude of it, the length of the vector and the angle of that vector with the positive X axis. Okay, well I have neither in this case, do I? But can I calculate them? How can I calculate M? Yes, Katie? Correct. And this happens to be a triplet, so the magnitude is five. The mag it's three, four, five. So this will be five at, and I don't know the angle. But here's the angle, and can I use a trig ratio to solve for the angle? What trig ratio would I use to solve for D? Yes. Oh, oh. Well, it's not 45 because these are not the same. And a 45, 45, 90, it's the legs are equivalent. Wait, wait, are you talking about like sine, cosine? Trig ratio, sine, okay. cosine, tangent. Um, sine D? D, the angle. Um, you could use the sine of 4. That's always the sine of the angle. Help me, Ethan. Well, it would be an inverse, right? Okay, so give me the, the original equation, not the inverse. What would you use? Um, it would be tan D is four over three. Correct, and we do the inverse. The inverse of four over three equals the angle. So what's the inverse tan of four over three? Y'all give me the angle. 53.13. So it would be 5 at 53.13. Yes. Okay. I'm looking for this angle. I don't have the hypotenuse given. I have the opposite side. I have the adjacent side. So I look at what's given and I ask myself, what trig ratio uses the opposite side and the adjacent side? And that's the tangent. Okay, 
That's in quadrant one. That's the easiest quadrant. In quadrant two, let's say I have a vector here. And I tell you that it's at 135 degrees. And let's say the length is seven. So now I have polar coordinates, seven at 135 degrees. What are the rectangular coordinates? I always draw my right triangle to the X axis, always. In the second quadrant, in the second quadrant, I'm taking 180 minus that angle. In the third quadrant, I'm taking 100. I'm, I'm still going to do 180 minus that angle, but I'm going to say the angle is positive. Because that's still going to be the angle. I could have said the angle minus 180, but it's easier just to remember. 180 minus the angle in the second and third quadrant. In this last quadrant, it's going to be 360 minus the angle. So this one, it's just the angle when I draw it to the x-axis. Second and third is going to be 180 minus the angle. The fourth, it's going to be 360 minus the angle. To calculate the angle that I use, that I'm solving for when I'm going to rectangular coordinates. Okay. So what's 180 minus 135? Yes, 45. that's what this angle is, 45 degrees. I use that angle to solve for the R and the U, okay, yes. Is this a 45, 45? It has to be a 45, 45, 90. So what's my R value? Seven, negative seven. It's what? Somebody said it. It's half times the square root of two. So it's half times the square root of two. This one's negative. It's half times the square root of two. That one's positive. So what are my rectangular coordinates? Negative seven square root of two over two R plus seven square root of two over two U. Yes? How would you get the 7 squared 2 over 2? Okay, in the, in the Pythagorean triple of 45, 45, 90, it's 1, 1 square root of 2. Oh. So to get back, I divide by square root of 2, or it's half times the square root of 2. All right. All right. Third quadrant. Third quadrant, let's say I had a 200 degree angle. Where am I drawing my triangle to? What axis? X. X. So I'm drawing it up. Now what is this angle? How many is it? What's the degrees of this angle? 20. I go 180 to 200. How many degrees is that? 20, right? Okay. What if I have it in this third quadrant and I say it's at 300 degrees? I mean, fourth quadrant. Where am I drawing my triangle to? X axis. Thank you. X axis. What is this angle? If it's at 300 degrees, how many more degrees do I get to 60? Got it? All right, let's look, let's work through your examples. We're gonna convert these polar coordinates, four at 57, to rectangular coordinates. Four at 
57 degrees. That's how you read that. Four at 57 degrees. 100% of the time, you begin by drawing it. What quadrant is that in? 57 degrees. One, two, three, or four. One. It's in the first quadrant. I draw my vector. It's 57 degrees. The length of my, um, the magnitude is four. I need my R, it's going to be positive. My U is going to be positive. R, your X value, always goes with your X with cosine. So if I'm looking at X, Y coordinates, it's always cosine, sine. That's something you just need to memorize, right? Like I went back through that today in pre-calculus. You will do this in, in physics. X always deals with your cosine value. Y always deals with your sine value. And it's logical, so I'm going to show you why. Um, if I'm solving for R, and I, I'm using a trig ratio, what trig ratio am I using? R is what in relation to the 57 degrees? It's what side? Say it, Corey. I thought you said it. Jacob. Adjacent. Four is the hypotenuse. What trig ratio? Cosine. Cosine. So, you can always just memorize. X always has to do with your cosine value. Y always has to do with your sine. So, the cosine <coughs> of 57 degrees is R over 4 multiplying by 4. So, whatever quadrant I'm in, it's the magnitude times the cosine of that angle equals your R value. The magnitude times the cosine of that angle equals your R value. Yes. What is, what is 4 times the cosine of 57? 2.17. 2.17. So U relates to the Y, which relates to the sine. sine. So 4 times the sine of 57 degrees is always going to be my U value. R cosine U sine because R is my X value, U is my Y value. What's four times the sine of 57? Anybody else have it other than Corey? Yes, Owen. 3.35. Did you get that? Are they both positive, negative, what? Positive because it's in the first quadrant. So it's 2.17R plus 3.35U. Got it? Okay, look at example two. Seven at 230 degrees. Cosine deals with what value? Sine? Okay. This is, um, example two is... 7 at 230 degrees. All right, what quadrant is 230 degrees in? Third. Third quadrant. So from here to here is 230 degrees. But where do I draw my triangle to? The x-axis. The x-axis, thank you for remembering that because that is very important. You always do. The length... The magnitude of my vector is 7. My R is now going to be negative. My U is going to be negative. But I need to use this triangle and I need to use this angle here. What's this angle? How'd you get 50? Right, 230 minus the 180. Does everybody understand that? is 50, right? R goes with what trig ratio? Cosine. cosine. So 7 times the cosine of 50 degrees is my R value. And 7 times the sine of 50 degrees is my U value.
Just a minute. Let's give everybody a chance to. Did you have a question on it, or do you just want to answer? Answer. All right, just give us a minute. I'm actually going to do something else as well. All right, what did you get for the um, R value? Add. All right, yes. So negative, right? It's really 4.5 because it's 4.99. Okay. And what did you get for the sign? Who else did this in their calculator? Jacob? Okay, you could have put 230 in your calculator. And your calculator knows that in the third quadrant, the sine and the cosine are negative. All right, so do seven times the cosine of 230 degrees. You get negative 4.5. Do seven times the sine of 230 degrees. You get the negative. Okay, so you can do the angle because your calculator knows that in the first quadrant, all trig ratios are positive. In the second quadrant, only the sine is. In the third quadrant, only the tangent is positive. In the fourth quadrant, only the cosine. I told y'all this little thing. All students take calculus. Did I tell you all this? Yes. I did, didn't I? And we're in the third quadrant. Only the tangent's positive. So the sine and the cosine, your R and your U, are going to be negative. All right? So that's our rectangular coordinates. Now let's do 42 at 340 degrees. Y'all are catching on way too fast. This is excellent. All right, so we're doing 42. Wow, that's a long vector. 42 at 340 degrees. All right, what quadrant is this in? Fourth quadrant. It's in the fourth quadrant. The length is 42. It stops at 340 degrees. I draw my triangle to the x-axis. And so what is this angle? It's 20 degrees because it's 360 minus 340. So the reason I don't always, I could say R is 42 times what? Which ratio goes with R? R equals 42 times, huh? Cosine. cosine. I could say cosine of 340. Um, and I could say U is 42 times the sine of 340. Here's where you're gonna get a problem. Here's where you're gonna have a problem. If this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, are you listening? You're not listening. If this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle or a 45, 45, 90 triangle, decimals are unacceptable. So you would never write your R value and your U value in decimals, ever. If this triangle is a 45, 45, 90 or if it is a 30, 60, 90. That's why you need to know, is this one of our special triangles? Okay. So R, R is positive, U is negative. So 42 times the cosine of 20 is what? What is 42 times the cosine of 20? Ethan, what is that? 39.467092. Okay, we'll go to two decimal places. And U, Jude, what is 42 times... The sine of 20. Uh, 14.3643. So 
14.37. Okay, I always engage my brain and make sure that those two numbers are less than 42 because 42 is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So if I get a number larger than the hypotenuse, I, I, in my mind, when you're reading those numbers out, I am expecting a number less than 42, okay?